Good morning, Christy. And Rich and Jen Larson. Hello, hello. Good morning, Lenny and Dale. Trisha and Tony, good morning. Good morning, Carrie. Good morning, Dennis. Oh, morning, Sherry. Good to see you online. Be well in Christ, Corey. Jan Stevens and Carol Kay listening in, and the other Carol just came in, Carol Levine. And Betty, and Betty's online, Betty Hansen. Good morning, Randy. <clears throat> Well, good morning, and if you're wondering where I am this morning, I am in Madison, Wisconsin, and I'm at uh, one of my bestest uh, friends from high school, my friend Becca, and I dropped off Ariel on Friday. She moved into her dorm, and I spent all of yesterday driving around Madison with a bunch of other lost parents. <laughs> with all of the construction and one-way roads. And uh, yeah, it's just fun to drive around Madison, right? <laughs> but we got Ariel settled in and got to see Luke. And what I'm most grateful for this morning is that Becca um, is going to do um, a message this morning, which allowed me to be present with Ariel and Luke and el helping her get moved in. Just unexpected blessing there. Now, if you hear any strange noises, um, what you need to know is this is Becca's porch, and Becca lives very close to the Madison Zoo. It's very possible we've been listening to the howling monkeys this morning. Um, they're quiet right now. So I, I don't know what you're going to hear this morning. And we're on a public road with entrance to it, so we could have uh, anything happen this morning, but it'll be fine. Our preaching text this morning is The Burning Bush and Moses, a story uh, we are all familiar with, and it is Moses' call story also, where God uh, calls Moses from the burning bush, and Becca's going to speak a little bit about her call story, very appropriate for today's lesson. And I don't have any announcements from the church. So with that, um, we'll get started. Again, we do invite you to have your Bibles and a piece of bread. Our confession and forgiveness this morning is from our normal uh, ELW worship book. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let us pray the prayer of the day. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without you nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Embrace us with your mercy that with you as our ruler and guide, we may live through what is temporary without losing what is eternal through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 105. It's a psalm that recites God's faithfulness to Israel. And we will be doing verses 1 and, one, one and 2 and 23 through 26 and verse 45. So it's okay if you uh, don't want to join in with the psalm this morning. I'll recite the psalm for us. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works. Then Israel came to Egypt. Jacob lived as an alien in the land of Ham. And the Lord made his people very fruitful and made them stronger than their foes, whose hearts he then turned to hate his people, to deal craftily with his servants. He sent his servant Moses and Aaron, whom he had chosen, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. Psalm 105. Our reading this morning is Exodus chapter 3. If you want to join in, Exodus chapter 3. And it's Moses at the burning bush. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Now where we are in this story of Exodus, Moses has grown up in Pharaoh's household, again adopted by Pharaoh's daughter, Bithia. Moses grew up, and he has committed murder, killed an Egyptian who was beating an Israelite slave, and then the next day he tried to break up a fight between two Israelites fighting, and they weren't happy about Moses being over them. Pharaoh got word of the murder, and Moses had to flee. And he fleed in, out into the desert, and now he's in a Midian, married a Midianite woman. And Moses is older and mature now. And he's out with his father's uh, flocks. And this is where we pick up the story now. So Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Moses led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called him, called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Then God said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. <laughs> but Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. God said, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. 
When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. God said further, Then you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. And God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, has sent me to you. That this is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. So again, kind of what I spoke of last week, this would be the second Sunday, six years ago. And if you remember that Sunday, I had you take off your shoes. We'd heard the story of Moses standing on holy, holy ground, and, and God told Moses to take his shoes off. And I'm asking you to do that again. And I'm going to take off my shoes right now, and, and Becca just taught, took off her shoes. Or you might have your slippers on. But even in your home right now, in this space together, we are on holy ground together right now. So, I invite you to take your shoes off, and we're on holy ground. And today what I'm inviting you to do, as, as Becca um, talks kind of about her story, Becca built this mosaic behind me. And it wasn't finished yesterday. And when Becca showed it to me and started telling me the story of this mosaic, I just says, Becca, you have a story to tell. And it's a beautiful story. Without further ado. Good morning from Madison, and it's uh, a pleasure to uh, get to see you all again. I got to see you from Donna's cabin a couple weeks ago, and um, so yeah, Donna invited me yesterday to talk about my call story, my first experience of calling, and I was resistant at first, but then the ideas ju just kept flowing. So here's here's my story. Um, my dad was a Lutheran minister, so I grew up in the church. And, and like the story of Moses being drawn towards that burning bush, dad was drawn to the ministry from a really young age. And he used to talk about that sense of calling and how he sometimes welcomed it, and then other times he just resisted it wholeheartedly. Um, but I was intrigued. I was so curious. And as a child, I really, really wanted to know that sense of calling in my own heart. I wanted that awe and reverence burning bush moment. As I went into high school, I was seeking, listening, looking for the answer um, or my calling in sort of academic pursuits. What was I going to be? What was my career going to be? And in our high school junior, junior year careers class, um, I hit on, I want to be a judge. I like to be fair. I like to think through things. I'm a good problem solver. I want to be a judge. Um, and so for a while that shone like a, a light for me, a guiding light. Um, but then, you know, fast forward a little bit, the summer before my senior year of high school, our youth group was planning a trip to the Boundary Waters um, through Camp Vermilion. And I'd been there a couple years earlier with the youth group. I hadn't known anybody in my group then, and I was a pretty shy person, but I had fallen in love with the Boundary Waters and with canoe trips. So as I headed into my senior year, I thought, what could be better than going on a canoe trip with two of my bestest buddies, including Pastor Donna and our friend Cynthia. So um, we launched on that trip and giggled our way across the Boundary Waters, um, <laughs> <laughs> slapping mosquitoes, just being, it was a great trip. But for me, there was one really pivotal moment, really for my whole life's journey. Um, 
and it was a morning devotional. Our, our canoe guide on that trip was a, a beautiful woman named Kim Schallman. She was tall and, and just gentle and strong, and she had a smile that just lit up the world, you know, and she loved guiding canoe trips. She loved taking kids like Donna and I out to explore the wilderness and to explore our spirituality. And so this one morning she was standing in a stream um, doing what she called first word, just reading some scriptures and give us a morning thought to think about. And we're being visited by a mosquito, mosquito right, right now. now. <laughs> <laughs> sort of apropos. But so as Kim stood there in the stream, not super different from my mosaic here, and the sun was shining on her head and dancing on the water, um, and I was just sitting there, just standing there in this profound gratitude for that experience. And, and I heard this, or felt, um, this voice inside me, Becca, you can be a canoe guide too. You belong here. We're doing what Kim is doing. And I had this incredible inner yes, just sort of blow up from inside me and reverberate out all of me, goosebumps and everything, and I, from that moment on, that vision that I would be a canoe guide in the Boundary Waters was a true guiding light for me. It was just a beacon of, I'm gonna do that. When I graduated from high school, I used all my graduation money to buy a good sleeping bag, what every high school girl dreams of doing, right? <laughs> and uh, in college, I took the water safety instruction class so I could be prepared. Well, finally, I was old enough uh, as I was graduating from college, and so in March of my senior year, they were having a college fair. Um, I mean, a camp counselor fair that, that many camps from all over came in, and they were all set up in the commons area of our dining hall, and, and I walked in, and I scanned the room, and I found the Camp Vermilion table because that was the only place I wanted to work. And I walked up to the table, and who should be standing behind it but from five years ago, our guide, Kim. And Kim, we both looked at each other and smiled and she even remembered my name. I don't know how many hundreds of campers she had, but she's like, hey, Becca, how are you? And I was like, oh my gosh, Kim, I'm fine. But then I told her about that moment five years ago when I saw her in the stream and how I'd felt called and she offered me a job on the spot. And I was over the moon ecstatic. Um, I couldn't believe I got to do that. Guiding canoe trips turned out to be my favorite job ever for a whopping $110 a week too. <laughs> um, it also was the most challenging job I ever had um, on all levels, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Every week I'd get a new batch of kids, like seven or eight kids and one adult. <clears throat> They'd come in and we'd, we'd wander the Boundary Waters Wilderness together um, for about five or six days at a time. We were wandering through sun, rain, howling winds, bears stealing our food. Um, a tree fell on one of my tents the first week I was out. Uh, there'd be earth shaking thunder, sometimes there was fire from lightnings, it was, and, and of course, mosquitoes. There were lots of things to navigate, and I loved it. So for me, no matter how hard it was in terms of terrain or weather or those interpersonal growth opportunities that traveling with <laughs> teenagers and, and in hard circumstances can bring about, I felt really solidly held in the water of God's grace held in the knowledge that God loved me and all of us absolutely unconditionally. And through the challenges of these trips, I really learned to open my heart and let God's strength flow in me and through me. And you know, one of the songs from my childhood that I would often think of was this, the lyrics from On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand, All Other Ground is Sinking Sand. It, Christ was a solid rock for my heart, and, and that job really helped me stick the landing, so to speak. Um, if you've gone on canoe trips, you know that portages can be really long, hard, mucky, buggy, painful. Sometimes there's trees down on our path, just like in life. Sometimes the path would disappear into nothingness, and we'd have to 
you know, wander around in the woods until we could find it again. But I relished the challenge of the portages. I am built rather like a Clydesdale or a moose. So it was a place where I could really embrace and celebrate that aspect of me. But another thing I loved about portages was that the challenges really helped me open to the energy of God and basically to the great I am that Donna spoke of in, in the reading. When I felt lost or totally depleted on a portage and wondered if I could make it carrying all the stuff I was carrying it, I'd usually start singing one of our camp songs. And a favorite of mine was on the toughest stretches was, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Energy would inevitably bubble up and I'd usually finish the portage pretty happy, maybe hurting and tired, but satisfied and content as well. In those days, I took that quote, saved from my enemies, pretty literally. And I didn't ponder it very much because I really didn't think I had any human enemies. But as I was putting the thoughts together for talking to you this morning, I kind of realized that my greatest enemies in life have been my fears, like fear of failing, fear of looking stupid, fear of not measuring up, my self-doubts, my yearning to please other people or not disappoint them, no matter how unreasonable their expectations. And maybe other things have been there as enemies distracting me from being open to or even seeking out burning bush moments in my life. These enemies have distracted me sometimes from practicing my faith and from trusting God's calling for the next step in my path. Yep. I have definitely have stretches wandering both outer wildernesses as well as some inner wildernesses <laughs> when my connection to God's burning bush invitations was weak or when I have even just walked away from them. God didn't disappear in those times, but I was distracted and I was organizing to less reliable sources of love and light. So talking to you today is a sort of burning bush moment for me as well. Pastor Donna had been listening to me talk and had pointed out that I had a story of calling that would be great to share. At first, I resisted immensely. She said I could have four minutes, and I'm like, uh-uh, you're not getting me to talk. <laughs> Those old ego reasons. I'm not that interesting. I'm not articulate. I don't have that much to say, and so on. But then I decided to take a deep breath and get quiet. And underneath the resistance was a warmth welling up and goosebumps. And I've grown to recognize those things as sort of burning bush invitations. Invitations for me to take off my shoes and stand on the hallowed ground of God's burning bush promises of love, awe, and wonder. So, Tying my canoe trip calling story back to each of our journeys, here's what I've learned. We are all paddling and portaging through this life as best we can. It can get pretty crazy at times, and just like a compass knows how to find true north, our hearts know how to say yes to God. When we choose to open ourselves to however the burning bush presents to us as individuals, the waters of chaos and confusion can transform into waters of awe, wonder, and grace. And instead of trying to figure out our next series of many, many steps or control those anticipated waves of life in our future, if we can watch, listen, or feel for saying yes to God's burning bush invitations, we know that each next step that one next step, the one that's closest in and the only one we really truly need to worry about taking, that is hallowed ground. It's hallowed ground where God's beauty, strength, and love radiates in and through us and where our hearts and minds can rest, rest trustingly in the great I am. When we stand here on that hallowed ground, this hallowed ground, we can enter differently into each moment 
of life, one sacred step at a time. The storms of life will still happen. The portages will still be grueling at times. We will just experience the challenges differently. So my wish is that we can each let ourselves notice and embrace the burning bush moments. And from this hallowed ground, may we experience that peace that passes all understanding and may it keep our hearts and minds in Christ. Amen. <laughs> Amen, sister. Thank you, Becca. I can see I'll be replaced next Sunday. <laughs> but back to the mosaic, and I invited you, you know, over Becca's shoulder. As I mentioned, it wasn't finished yesterday. And Becca realized that that, I mean, when she started this mosaic, she didn't know how to build a mosaic, but she just took it one piece, literally, at a time. And... Yeah. It was... So the next step was to grout it. So I grouted it last night. <laughs> and her next step, as she starts a spiritual direction program, yep. um, was today. So God is good. Thank you, Becca. And uh, God so. bless. <laughs> so kind of like with Mo Moses' call story, um, our prayers today will be, um, Here I am, Lord. And Moses said, Here I am. And Becca spoke of burning bush moments, and I think I heard a, here I am, Lord. Mm -hmm. So for the prayers of the people today, I will say, whom shall I send? And you respond with, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. We pray for those who are ill or anxious, those who are lonely, those who are despairing, those affected by Hurricane Laura and wildfires burning in California and Colorado. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. Renew the ties of mutual regard in our civic life. Enable us to eliminate racism and violence. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. I, the Lord of snow and rain, I've borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. We pray for all children and students, school teachers, administrators, custodian and, and bus drivers as we enter this new school year with hopes and doubts. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. I will go if you lead me. I will hold your people in my hand. Amen. I invite you now to share Be Well in Christ.
Be well in Christ. For our bread liturgy today, I kind of think of Moses and that burning bush moment as he was in the presence of of the Lord God Almighty standing there on holy ground. And so our song today for the Bread Liturgy will be Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. For today, this 14th Sunday of Pentecost and the 24th Sunday of Exile, our Bread Liturgy ritual today. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our prayers shall rise to thee. This is bread and a ritual for the journey until we gather again, far longer than we thought it would be. Help us to be open to your spirit and grounded in you today, even as we now rest our feet on holy ground in our homes. Tear off a piece of bread. Before you eat it, think of the ways God has shown up in your life in burning bush moments and in the lives of others. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, there is none beside thee. As you eat this bread, may God grant us strength and resilience to remember that Christ is with us. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Amen. As we reach across the aisles, let us pray the prayer Christ taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Well, from Becca's home <laughs> here in Madison, and I, I forgot to uh, tell you what uh, Becca does here in Madison. She is a senior scientist with UW-Madison. She's a Ph.D researcher, statistician, and has been doing Alzheimer's research for 10, 11 years now in Madison. Yep. So, oh, yep, bring out our sheepy. <laughs> Be well in Christ. <laughs> From our home to yours. Be well in Christ. God bless. <laughs>